Throughout this series, we've seen a few different ways to install ingress, service mesh, use it, etc. Now, let's focus on the cloud. So because you may be using AWS, Azure, or both, we're gonna see how to do it in both. Now, first things first, we are gonna use the Ingress Nginx controller. That is usually the most popular option that people are going with. However, of course, all other Ingress controllers typically do work, but you do wanna keep in mind how you're installing it. So this is a really good example here in Azure. Now, first things first, I'm gonna bring down my cube config to set my context for my AKS cluster. I'm gonna use this command here, az aks get credentials, and I'm gonna specify the AKS cluster and the resource group that it's in. Now I'm just gonna run kubectl get nodes. I'm gonna confirm this exists. Yep, okay, so we are good to go. It is set to the AKS cluster. I'm installing ingress nginx right here. We can see the code using Helm. And we're just using the same installation method here as we would for any other Kubernetes cluster. So we're using the Helm repo for ingress nginx and then we're pulling it down. Now, here's where things differ a little bit for Azure and ultimately for other clouds. Now, as you can see here, we have a set for controller service annotations. And those annotations we're setting that metadata is for the Azure load balancer. So as we can see, it's going to differ based on what cloud you're in because even though it is Kubernetes across the board, let's face it, the cloud providers do have full access for the control plane and therefore they do make little updates here and there. Now this is you know completely out of cusp, but I've seen this especially with like GitOps controllers, for example. I would install a GitOps controller in one cloud, then I would install it in another and it would act completely different. So before you're installing maybe to GKE, for example, or another cloud, make sure that it's working the way that you're expecting. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna set up the namespace here, but before that, I'm going to create it. So kubectl, create namespace, ingress basic. All right, next, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set the environment variable. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the repo. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's up to date, clear the screen here, and then now I'm going to install the ingress controller. And oops, as you can see, this command was gonna create the namespace for me anyways. <laughs> That's okay, I am a step ahead. All right, and if I take a look here, as we can see, the ingress controller was deployed successfully. Okay, so now if we head over to the Azure portal, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in load balancers. And as we can see, here is our load balancer right here, all right? Now, it's going to be in this odd looking resource group here that's totally okay. But one thing that I do wanna show is if we go to health probes, we can see the path right here, okay? So that's where it's targeting. And then if we run kubectl get all namespace, ingress basic we can see here that our ingress controller the pod the services itself are deployed now one thing to point out here just because it's in azure remember it is of type load balancer and it does have this external ip address right here now if we just head back to the azure portal again and here's the load balancer if i go to front-end IP config, notice here how there are two front-end IP configurations. So this is our confirmation here that it is successful. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at AWS. So AWS is going to be a little bit different. Now, first things first, we're gonna to have to set our context for our EKS cluster. And to do that, we'll run the AWS EKS update cube config command. We'll set our region and the name of our cluster. All right, so if we run kubectl get nodes, we are good to go on our EKS cluster. Now, one thing that I wanna show really quick, cause this is actually how we're gonna be deploying our ingress controller. But before that, if you head over, let me zoom in here really quick to uh, github.com slash Kubernetes slash ingress nginx slash deploy slash static, you'll see a provider information here, and there's a bunch of different ones, but AWS has its very own provider. 
So if we go to the deploy.yaml here, this is what we're going to be deploying. So there's the namespace, the service accounts, the roles themselves, some more roles, some cluster roles. I'm not going to go through all this. Feel free to do that if you'd like. There's some role bindings here, cluster role bindings, config maps, and then the services itself for the ingress controller. Now again, remember, like we talked about, depending on the cloud that you're in, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, in this case with AWS, we can specify the exact provider here, which is what we're going to do. So if we head back over to VS Code, I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to run kubectl apply minus F to that manifest. And as you can see, all of these pieces here were officially created for us. All right, so now if we head over to the browser, we're at AWS here, and if I go to EC2 actually, which is right here, we can see that we have one load balancer. And if I click on that, we can see that it's still in the provisioning state, that's normal. But if we scroll down here and we go to listeners, we can see that this is in fact the load balancer for our ingress controller, and by default, it sets up port 80 and port 443 as the listeners. So those are two different methods that you can use to deploy ingress controllers via AWS and EKS. And of course, depending on if you're in another cloud, it's probably going to look a little bit different. For example, if you're in GKE, you're not going to be, you know, specifying an Azure load balancer. So again, it's more or less the same method. You're going to be using Helm or you're going to be pointing directly to the Kubernetes manifest to deploy the ingress controller. Usually one of those are pretty safe bet. So it's going to be the same type of style, but just pointing to the specific cloud. Mm -hmm.